please welcome Boris Martin, CEO of Esther Foundation. I want to tell you a story. Um, 1986, I went to Paris to study law, international law, European law, but that was very boring. I hated it. So I looked at the program of the city and I found a theater person. I don't know if you know him, maybe Mr. Monsieur Jacques Lecoq. Huh? So I went there. I knocked on the door. I had a nice uh, school. And he uh, said, yeah, welcome. We have our courses. Uh, you can be part of it. So I was part of it. Merci, monsieur. Merci. Ah, je vous en prie. Merci. So I did it. And uh, he asked us to go on stage. We were a group of 10, 15 people. <laughs> the topic of today is clown. Uh, so go on stage. So we all tried to, you know, blah, 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 blah. we tried to be funny, but it wasn't funny at all. Zero. Ende. Null. Poof. Leave it again. Over. And then he started talking, Monsieur Lecoq. And I think this is a lesson I learned from my life. And I want to share it. Listen. Listen, guys. It's girls. Guys and girls, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's not... People don't laugh because you're funny. People laugh because they share the same experiences with you. It is about the question that you fail, that you're not successful, that you fail again and fail and fail, and you stand up and you fail, and you're sad. C'est votre tristesse, he said all the time. C'est votre tristesse, which is important. So it's the, the deep human metaphor of basically an uncompromisable mirror, which leads you at the end of the to yourself, to the deep of yourself. And they're basically, you know, sharing the fact that you fail. Everybody fails, right? Sometimes in his or her life. And this makes it so nice and to enter the conversation. And this is why also we love those guys on stage who fail, because we feel as they do, right? And this was a message I kept for my life, and I tried to translate it in the things I did, in the work I do, in the people I meet, or, you know, in the way we run different innovation stories or projects. What does it mean? And I think I, I, I tried to translate this maybe, and I thought so much as I saw the project, is there anything in it which might help or which might support the purpose of your organization or your leadership in it, as it helps me every day. So maybe there's a message in it. Now, one thing I think we sometimes or most of the times get wrong about creativity is the fact that we always believe creativity is something which is on top, which is additional, right? But Usually, creativity starts with very, very hard questions. With a white paper. With questioning everything. Right? My, my beloved picture always was, you know, when you build a house, you first dig a hole. Because if you don't dig a hole, your house doesn't have any fundaments. So you start with digging a hole. And I think this is so necessary when, they, when we think about our purposes or how we run our organizations. It's every time from time starting with a white paper is so important. Because it gives us a chance to find the new thing. The new is, has to, you know, it's goodbye to the usual. It's a farewell to what we are familiar with. It's, a funeral, basically, for that, what we consider as normal. <laughs> and if this is possible, if the space for it is there, then 
creativity can unleash its full potential. If it's just a prolongation of something which is already existing, it's over. You'll probably never get there where you want to drag your, your organization to. Now, there was a guy who was called Josef Schumpeter, and he called basically innovation the creative destruction. Why? Because you always, when, 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 when innovation comes in place, you have to create this safe space where this creativity as a destructive moment is possible to open your eyes, your minds, your heart for the new. And that's not easy. <laughs> you, know, you get very nervous. You know, creative people are sometimes really hard. Because, you, you know, we did this for 25 years and it works perfect. And she or he tells you, no, it doesn't. Oh, shit, yeah. I said, no, but our customers like it. They love it. I said, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we're all used to it. It runs perfectly and we have an organization and blah, blah. I said, yeah, that's fine, but I don't care. That's really hard. And I think, you know, it's not about the person outside, but it's about us ourselves, that we ourselves from time to time ask ourselves is the purpose of what we do is still part of what we plan to do. I think it's very important to understand that creativity needs sometimes the place for destruction. You know, there's a nice Viennese uh, way, if you, for example, ask a Viennese um, waiter, there's a free table, you want to go into a coffee house, right? There's a free table, free seats, and you ask the waiter, can I sit here? You know how he answers? Na, no, na, ned. <laughs> so it's four times no. Na, no, na, ned, which is a yes. Okay. Why I put this here, and I try to understand because I heard so many languages or so many speeches today about social change, the hard time we have to convince others. And for me, you know, why I put Michel Foucault here and, and the revolt, for me it is extremely important to say that, you know, our thinking is something very limited. So we are all very much part of our organizations, part of the culture we are born in, or part of an institution where you have bureaucracies and the legitimacy of bureaucracies. So thinking is very limited. And uh, I think this is one thing we have to be aware of, that our thinking always is a bit limited. Now, this is hard to admit, because basically we are leading a team where we are running an organization and they all, you know, want to want to uh, see our leadership or they want to know where we're going to go. But basically, you have to admit that you are vulnerable because your thinking is limited. But there's a way out of this. You know, the, the um, how do I say it? But, you know, your, your, your way to, to look at a thing or to look at something you deal with in your daily life as an organization or, you know, running a, a big entrepreneur or an NGO is always that you basically look at it from your point of view and, you know, your impressions and your thoughts and what you have learned. But I would love to tell you, and this is why so many things so many times go completely wrong, because it is hard to accept that my thinking is very limited. And if once you accept it and you find a way to have lead this conversation with your others, then people understand that what you do is more about the fact that you just want to achieve something, but you want to create something new or create a team or lead a team, create an atmosphere, be happy, go forward, fight it through. So there is a way out of this. And I want to show you a picture now because I think you all know what it is. Uh, now, I don't want to go into this female-male thing, but it's more, we are more used to it, uh, and as we get older, even more used to it, right? But, <laughs> but I think you all know what it is, right? Anybody who doesn't know what it is? Do I have to explain? Well, 
It is not what you see. It is not. Can you think of something which looks the same but is not that what you see? <laughs> well, it's a piece of art. On the 9th of April, 1917, a French guy called Marcel Duchamp put this into a museum. And everybody was upset. This is not art. But basically, it was one of the most important moments in art history. And it opened up a huge dimension of new creativity, pop art, uh, ready-mades he put into the museum, conceptive form of art, right? It marked a moment. It was a provocation uh, he did. Now, what I want to tell you with this is, this is so important that you move, move contexts. Sometimes the same thing in a different context is something completely different. And I think this opens up, again, a huge new way of looking at things, of dealing with them, of working on it. If you manage to change this context of interpretation, and I, 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 from, for me this is something very important because I experienced this so many times. I did so many things in my life where I thought, where the moment where we changed context was, was the moment where we had the breakthrough with all what we did. If you understand things you deal with for a very long time the same way, it might shut your creativity or it might shut the perspective. But, 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 thinking of changing the context. Now, how do you change context? And this is my last slide. There is... Um, one story I'm really fond of, um, I, I think I read this book uh, 25 times, and I can, you know, um, suggest it to you. This is uh, Victor Turner, is a, um, he's an anthropologist, ethnologist uh, from Great Britain, and he spent lots of time um, in, uh, in Indonesian and African communities, and his purpose there was to find out how, how these communities deal with disruption. So if something happens, if, for example, there's a marriage or there's a death, uh, we heard today, what do these communities do? How do they deal with such tremendous disruptions in the social fabric which is existing, right? And he found out that, and, and you know, he took some, he borrowed some ideas from Arnold von Gemmep, which, uh, which was a, uh, ethnologist from, from the Netherlands, but basically he tried to translate it to our societies. And he found out that people deal when there is disruptions basically in three steps. And I found this very interesting because the first steps, and I talked about it, is what he called separation. Now, what does that mean? Separation means that basically you find, as I said in the beginning, this moment of distance, this moment of farewell, this moment of goodbye to the usual, to what basically defines your life every day. I'll give you an example. For example, in, in one of the uh, communities, they, they took people who married out of town, right? They served them there, but they were about some, you know, uh, some kilometers away, um, and uh, defined some rituals, but they were out. It was basically to demonstrate the new, it was separated, it was kicked out, far away, go away. Now this is hard, because you're out. And I think if you, if you look back, all the initiatives you started in the beginning is basically understanding that you, you need to have a distance from reality in order to understand how you cope with reality. That's very important. Then he defined the second thing, which is the liminal stage. And the liminal stage is something very nice, because basically there is where the rituals come in. Right? You, don't, you cannot explain your situation from the past, but you also not cannot explain it from the future. You don't know. You're somewhere in between. All are equal in this stage. There is no social structure there. We are all on the same page. Right? This is basically in the moment where 
you create, you try, you fail, you create again, you try out, but you don't have any kind of security that what you want to achieve at the end will be a success. This is very, a very important stage where it is very important to have your rituals to cope with the insecurity there. And then the final stage is the re-aggregation. They brought the couple back. And the moment they bring the couple back, the reintegration into the social community is a completely different story. You come as a new person. And now you're somebody different. And I think, you know, I think this is so important to understand if we go on projects like social change, if you want to change something which is very much into our societies, right? It is very much, it is so important to take something out and to bring it back again, and then to try out if it, if it unfolds, right, the solutions you want to unfold. But as I think the, 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 the re-aggregation, like, you know, the, 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 the really decisive moment is that it is a completely different story than from where you started. So maybe if you start an idea uh, after going through all these uh, statuses at the end, your target is not your goal, which I mean is that you started to, you know, to create something, but at the end, you do it in a completely different way. You need this flexibility to re-aggregate as somebody different. And then, basically, your change or your innovation project or whatever you want to do will have the success you, ex you, you expected. So I think these are the four lessons. Creativity sometimes is more about destruction than adding something new. And this is something very valuable, and you have to create this safe space that this kind of questioning a reality is possible. The second thing is that you have to understand, and it is better than to understand, that um, if you look at yourself, uh, the, you know, the, um, the limits we have in the way we deal with creativity is a very interesting and necessary story in order to be able to cooperate in teams and to show this vulnerability opens up a lot of different possibilities and potentials you have there, right? The third thing is then train your, your imagination because the imagination is the way out of this. And finally, I think getting the process right where you exactly know that you have this moment of separation then probably gets more clear for you which goal you're gonna, which goal you want to uh, realize, or which target you want to realize at the end of the day. So I think, from what Mr. You know, Monsieur Lecoq told me, <laughs> that basically you you are you are not la you know you, you are not funny because you try to be funny, but you are you are identifying with the deep sorrows and the grief and. Uh, the stories of, of people is the crucial element in, uh, in how to create an atmosphere of, uh, of conversation and of creativity. Therefore, uh, I hope I could add something to this wonderful day we had today um, and to the important talks we had that maybe you know, some of these thoughts might resonate with you in terms of how do I want to run my purpose and my cause uh, in the future in a way that it still hits right, the, the expectations I have personally or you have personally in, those, uh, in, in running those organizations. So, um, well, um, this was it. Uh, um, I have to collect my stuff uh, because I have to go back um, into reality because the unmasking basically is not the you know, ma the mask is not the crucial thing, but, but taking off the mask is the crucial thing. Uh, I hope you all saw the butterfly. Goodbye. Bye.